What's up brothers and sisters? I hope you guys are having such a blessed day today. I'm Colton from Seeking Wisdom Ministries and the Lord wants me to talk to my brothers and sisters in the faith. These are for those who are trying to follow God in peace and holiness. It says in the word of God that we must follow peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. We need to seek after the truth of God's word. Now, uh, the Lord wants me to talk about the trials that we're going through. And especially in these last moments, uh, these last days, we are, I believe, wholeheartedly one of the last generations before the millennial reign with Christ Jesus and before the Antichrist comes out. Um, now, a lot of stuff is happening in this world right now. Um, the Lord actually gave me this quick vision that I'm going to share before I get into the word of God with my brothers and sisters talking about something that we need to know. And I'm going to edify through the Holy Spirit who lives inside of me, lives inside of you if you're a child of God in the faith, but you need to test to see if you are in the faith. But before I get into that, I'm going to share this quick vision that the Lord gave me of, uh, I was I was in prayer with uh, some of my brothers and sisters in Christ in person, and it was really powerful because we all felt it at the same exact time. It was like a, the Spirit revealed and opened up our eyes. But this is what it was, guys, and this is, uh, I believe, wholeheartedly the real deal that's happening upon this earth in these last and final moments, uh, an oppression is taking place. A demonic oppression upon those who truly are desiring to serve God with all of who they are. Because that's what this is about, guys. Jesus died, was buried, and resurrected on our behalf, but we have a free will to decide to live for him or not. And this was the vision that happened very quick. It was very quick. It was just like a and I saw it. The Lord showed me there are demons uh, these fallen angels who have been locked in prison in hell to not yet be released until the latter days, the latter times. And I saw them, these evil, powerful, uh, demonic forces, uh, demonic fallen angels that are below in hell in shackles imprisoned. And the Lord was showing me that they're being released one at a time to go out into the world, to go out into the uttermost parts of the world and deceive many and bring confusion, bring strife, bring contention, bring uh, division. And they were getting released one by one, one by one. And I don't say this to scare anybody because as children of God, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind, knowing where our faith is. Our faith needs to be in Jesus in every situation. See, it's not enough just to mentally believe in Jesus Christ. That doesn't save you. It's faith in Jesus Christ that saves you. And faith is the confidence, the substance of things hoped for, yet the evidence of things not yet seen. Okay, so it's, 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 it's a testing of our faith that's happening right now as the demonic forces, as in Ephesians, it talks about that we don't fight against flesh and blood. Okay, we fight against principalities of powers of wicked spirits in high places that are constantly at war and waging for your soul. But there's a separating taking place of the true children of God and the fake. And I'm going to share it with you real quick. I think my camera's about to die. Let me come back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the camera died, but this is just spiritual warfare trying to happen because I really believe the Lord wants to reveal his truth to his children. There is an outpouring of revelation, of wisdom, of understanding of the truth of God's word that's happening in these final moments because we don't have a lot of time. And that vision that God gave me, I believe, is actually happening right now. Like there is demonic forces that are coming to blind, to take and snatch the word out of those that have been planted in those. But there are sons of disobedience that you have the free will to choose to obey God or not. And what are you wanting to do? Are you wanting to willfully obey God and surrendering your life as he gave you everything? We need to present ourselves as living sacrifices for the glory of the Lord for a vessel to be used. Because guess what? If you are not going to be able to be used by God, God's not going to force you to be used by him. But he will have nothing to do with you. If you want to reject Jesus Christ, if you want to not have faith, because we're saved by faith, if you want to disobey the Lord, that's okay. But the wrath of God is upon the sons of disobedience. Let us remember that. That's not just something Colton's a feeling. It's not an opinion. It's not a works-based salvation. It's a trust and by faith in the, the redemptive blood of Jesus. But if you love God, you will obey him. If you love God, you will keep his commandments. It's not a hard thing to obey someone whom you love and gave everything. Do we not understand that we have sinned, that we have fallen short of the glory of God, that we deserve hell for all of eternity, separated from God, but God made a way where there was no way. And how do you receive that gift? It says receive the Holy Spirit, meaning you don't have to. <laughs> it's a gift, but will you receive it with joy? So yeah, uh, between that vision and a lot of prayers with my brothers and sisters, we've been feeling the attacks of the enemy. But guess what? 
It's the trials that are purifying the faith of those who are truly in the faith of Jesus Christ. And let's continue in the word. I'm going to start in 1 Peter uh, verse 3. And this is Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, okay, who uh, is talking to the pilgrims at the dispensation of Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of spirit for obedience and sprinkling, and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So we need to obey the words of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to teach others to obey the words of Jesus Christ. See, you can hear the word of God all you want, but if you don't put it into practice, is your faith real? I mean, do you truly believe in Jesus Christ and his words? Because if you believe in his words, you need to know that if you don't repent, you're going to perish. Unless you all likewise re repent, you shall all likewise perish. This is a real deal. Repentance is a change of mind. It's a turning away from your sin. It is a turning away from the lifestyle, okay, your conversation of life that you used to live. And it is turning to Jesus Christ, having faith in him and asking him to renew you by the washing of the water, by the word. But you have free will to choose and allow God to work through you. It is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. It's not a work on our behalf, but guess what? When you know God and you have faith, you will work for him. Okay, it's, it, it, we're saved for good works. And, and the fruit of what you truly believe in your heart will show. Okay, I don't preach a false gospel as many people say. I preach the word of God. That's it. I don't preach my understanding. I don't preach my opinion. I preach what the word of God tells you. And, and, it, and you know, in the latter times, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. Because guess what? It hurts sometimes if you're living in sin. If you're living in disobedience, you don't want to hear something that will tell you, hey, you have to obey the word of God. Okay, it says in James that not just hearers of the word, of, okay, not just hearers of the word of God deceiving yourselves, but doers of the word. Be doers, be doers, be doers. So let's look at a heavenly inheritance for those who are truly going to do the word of God and obey it, love God, and truly allow the testing of this fire, of the trials and the tribulations that many saints in this world are going through right now. I'm here to encourage, I'm here to edify, I'm here to speak the oracles of God as God lives inside of me and I'm not here to sugarcoat things. I'm not here to preach the gospel that itches your ears because that's the demonic doctrine, once saved, always saved. It is not true. We need to continue in the faith and let's look at this real quick. Starting at verse 3 in 1 Peter 3, this is the word of God, okay? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. He's talking to saints. We need to understand this. He's talking to people who already had a born again acts experience. They, they were already filled with the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit. They already had a repentance from this world, a changing their mind and turning to Christ. They already were baptized in Jesus Christ. They were already baptized in Jesus name. So he's saying to you, hey, okay, blessed be the God of our father, Jesus Christ on you, who according to his mercy has begotten us again. <laughs> And to an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, preserved for you in heaven. There's a place for those saints who are uh, continuing in the faith in heaven, okay? Made in co-heirs with Christ Jesus for those who are in the faith. And it's a beautiful, undefiled land. It's a promised land. It's heaven with Christ. It is heaven with Jesus Christ. The fullness of God. Who are kept, verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. That's a powerful thing right there. Oh, but we're kept by our works. No, because the word of God says who are kept by the power of God through faith. It's faith that God will keep you. It's faith that God will continue to sanctify you. It's faith that God will continue to work in you to turn away from this world. Because guess what? To him who is able to keep us from stumbling. See, God is able to keep you from stumbling into sin. But guess what? When we're in, God does not tempt with sin. He does not tempt with evil. We are pulled away by our own fleshly desires and carnal things. The devil tempts with evil. But guess what? God tempts in obedience. God tempts righteousness. How do I say that? God will see and test your faith to see if are you going to obey him? Or are you going to obey the devil? See, you submit to God and resist the devil. Submitting to God is saying, God, I'm nothing. I'm humbling myself. I'm casting my cares unto you for I am unworthy. But God, I trust in you that you will keep me and who are kept by the power of God through faith. It is believing that he will keep you. Does that make sense? Because a lot of people think that I'm preaching this false gospel because I believe that you have to obey the words of God. But guess what? The word of God, Jesus himself said, obey me if you love me. Obey, these are they who love me if they keep my commandments. Keep the commandments of God if you love him. 
And that's the shoe, that's the showing of the fruit of God. You shall know them by their fruit. What fruit do you have? Because do we not know that all, all, all idolaters, all fornicators, all uh, thieves, all people who continue to live a lie, okay, in their sin, will go to hell. That's the truth. But let's continue verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by your various trials. See, it's okay to be grieved by trials, but it, it, it's, it's a continuing in it. And it's a knowing that in verse 7, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, at the revealing of Christ. See, your, your faith is being tested, guys. Allow it. Count it joy that you're being persecuted for righteousness sake. Knowing that your Father in Heaven sees that, but He's testing your faith. He's seeing, are you going to continue even when it's hard? Even when you're thrown in prison or persecuted by your loved ones for those who think you're holier than thou. Guess what, guys? Without holiness, you will not go to heaven. It's the Holy Spirit who dwells in you who produces holiness. And if they're going to mock you for being holier than thou, trust me, I've been through the same things. But don't live a compromised life. Continue in the faith. Because at the end of the day, if you truly believe, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let's continue, brothers and sisters. This is the meat of the word. This is the goodness of the word. This is the steak of the word, and it's delicious. I would urge you, go on a fast. Fast and pray. Read his word. Soak in it, and he will reveal to you the things that were hidden from those who are proud. Because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm getting hyped up. Thank you, God. Oh, Lord, I praise your name. He is worthy. He's worthy of praise. Okay, whom, having not seen, you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls, even the salvation of your souls. So there's an end of faith. And if you continue in that faith, you will receive the salvation of your soul. But many people think that I can just say a prayer one time, okay? And these are for those who truly believe in this, that they can say a prayer, accept Jesus into their heart, but continue to live in sin. That is not what Jesus has called you to. He has not called you to a life of evil. He's called you to a life of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit cannot come into you if you are living in fornication. He cannot can stay into you. You can grieve the Holy Spirit, but there is a time and a place, and God is patient, not willing anyone to perish, but there's a time where you can continue to grieve the Holy Spirit enough to where you push Him away. Because because in the last of days, hearts will grow cold, wax cold. They will continue. Many have had more pleasure in unrighteousness and did not receive a love for the truth that they might be saved. See, there's a lot of people who will receive the implanted word of God and then reject it because it's too hard or it's too, they're, they're, not, they're not willing, okay? It's a willingness to continue in faith by the grace of God to give you strength, endurance, because when we are weak, he is strong. Um... Yeah, that's it, guys. That's all the Lord wants me to share with you guys. But I'm going to end in prayer. So if you want to be renewed by the Holy Spirit, go get on your knees and get in prayer. He loves you. He desires to give you grace when you are weak. But guess what? If you never come to him humbly as a child and say, God, I need you, he, he will resist you. Because that is taking a humble position, saying, God, I, I'm not the God of my life. God, I can't do this. I'm feeling attacked from every side. And, and, and I'm, just feeling, I'm just feeling worn out. It's okay to feel worn out. Because when you are weak, he is strong. When you get to that place of humility and you say, God, I'm in need of you, he will always come to you. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. If you stay in the humility standpoint and you say, God, I'm in need of you, my Savior, my Redeemer, my faithful God, he is always faithful. So, Lord, I praise you for being faithful. I praise you for the, for the triary fire, fires of trials and tribulation that comes upon us, God, because I know that it is the purity and that it is the testing of our faith in you God and we know that we, there's a place reserved for us in heaven where there's not going to be any undefilement there's not going to be any uh, strife or contention or arguments or anything that is not but perfect peace so I thank you father be with my brothers and sisters as they go through their own trials and their own circumstances God bless them by the grace of God fill them with the mercy and the love of the peace of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in our hearts God because even though there's a wild world going out there even though there's a spiritual battle going on we can choose to yield to peace or we can choose to yield to fear we can choose to have the faith in God or we can choose to have the faith in the fear and the worry and the stress and I choose faith over fear I choose Jesus over this world I choose you God and I know my brothers and sisters do too Bless them, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.